Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, dwyerfootball.blogspot.com. It is the day after the Super Bowl. Emotions are running high. On talk radio right now, people are openly discussing whether or not the current Super Bowl MVP, Eli Manning, is better than his big brother. The very question would have been never asked just a few years ago. It was assumed that Peyton Manning was the gold standard. In fact, earlier this year, Eli Manning got ridiculed when he even suggested that he was an elite quarterback who needed to be thought of in the same breath with Tom Brady. So let's throw our hat into the ring. Is Eli Manning better than Peyton Manning? I would argue that he is. Let's talk about it. You know, perception changes over time. In my opinion, and it's all opinion, in my opinion, the biggest game either Manning brother has played in professionally was the first Super Bowl between the New England Patriots and the New York Giants, right, that Eli played in. Understand that game matters more than most games, right? We remember Super Bowls, but more importantly, we remember special Super Bowls. Not all Super Bowls are alike, right? Super Bowl three, for example, the Jets against the Colts, that stands out as one of the more significant Super Bowls. Well, there's only one time in the last quarter century in which a football team went into the Super Bowl unbeaten. And I think football purists know that had Tom Brady led the New England Patriots to an unbeaten season, we would be talking about that team the way we talk about the Lombardi Packers or the Steel Curtain the Pittsburgh Steelers of the 1970s, or the Bears of the 1980s, or the Montana, Ronnie Lott, Jerry Rice, 1980s era, Bill Walsh era, San Francisco 49ers, right? That unbeaten season, had it happened, would have been the crown jewel in the Belichick run. And that team is a historical team, right? Just the fact that you actually had the unbeaten 1970s era Dolphins coming out of the woodwork, people like Mercury Morris, Nick Bonacani, you know, Larry Zonka, uh, to talk about what it meant to be unbeaten while the Patriots were making their run underscores what an important team that was in football history. I can tell you, I went to Las Vegas, looked up at the board in a sports book filled with gamblers and saw a regular season game where the Patriots were favored by more than 20. And I remember some gambler looking up and saying, you know what, I'm still not betting against the Patriots. And I thought about it and I said to myself, hey, I wouldn't bet on the other team either. Right? The Patriots in several games were actually favored during that season by more than 20 points. And let me point out that not only did Tom Brady have a record year in terms of throwing touchdowns, but Randy Moss, his wide receiver, had a record year in terms of scoring touchdowns from the wide receiver position. He scored more touchdowns that season than Jerry Rice ever did in a single season. Right now, the Giants were huge underdogs in that game and of course that game ended with a giant upset and of course the MVP of that game was Peyton Manning and one of the most important plays in Super Bowl history it ranks up there quite frankly with San Antonio Holmes in the corner of the end zone was the David Tyree off the helmet catch and of course, the quarterback in that play was Eli Manning. 
Peyton Manning has never played in a game of that magnitude. He has no signature moment like that Eli Manning to David Tyree moment. And all I can say is when we look back, football is a different crowd than baseball. When we look back on football players, you remember those moments, right? The Immaculate Reception, the San Antonio Holmes moment that I just referenced, right? The Daryl Green, you know, return. Um, all I'm saying is when you think back to key players, how they are remembered will often be reflected in their biggest moments, right? Lynn Swan, um, you know, the uh, catch on the sidelines in the Super Bowl, the catch where he juggled it in the middle of the field, right? Those are the big moments. Eli's biggest moment is bigger than Peyton's biggest moment. And I believe it's going to make the Eli narrative more compelling going forward. Another big reason why Eli is better than Peyton, quite frankly, and will be remembered as such, is their relationship to Tom Brady. Right now, Brady, in my opinion, is the best quarterback of the post-Joe Montana era. Right, I saw Montana. I was lucky enough to be uh, in college in Northern California when Montana and Bill Walsh ruled the roost. Uh, forget the numbers. I don't care what the numbers are. And keep in mind, when you do look at the numbers, they're staggering. Four Super Bowls, no picks for Joe Montana. But just understand that Montana as a quarterback had a presence that's very hard to describe today. Right. While you've had many successful quarterbacks between Montana and now, quarterbacks like Troy Aikman, for example, right, three Super Bowl rings, none just carries the aura of invincibility, especially in the fourth quarter that Joe Montana did. And I believe the best quarterback of the post Montana era is Tom Brady. Right. I believe Tom Brady today is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Only two quarterbacks have been in five Super Bowls. One's John Elway, the other is Tom Brady. Now, my point to you is simply this. On January 18th, 2004, in the AFC NFC, uh, excuse me, in the AFC Championship game following the 2003 season, Tom Brady demolished Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts. Right, Peyton Manning threw three interceptions to Ty Law. Manning had a bad game. Right, this isn't like the game Kurt Warner had in the San Antonio Holmes game, where Warner threw for more than 300 yards, looked great, but just got beaten on a last drive by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right, no, Peyton Manning self-destructed. Biggest game of his career at that point. And he self-destructed. He got spanked in that conference final. Well, people forget that one year later, January the 16th, 2005. You know what? In the playoffs, again, not the championship game, but the game before the championship game. It was Tom Brady against Peyton Manning for supremacy in the AFC. And let's just say that Peyton Manning got beaten up again. All the Colts could score. In that game was three points. Manning couldn't even put a touchdown up on the board, right? Peyton Manning at that point was 0 and 7 at Foxborough, right? He lost that game 20 to 3. At that point in his career, Tom Brady owned Peyton Manning. Now I understand, you know, in 2007. Peyton Manning was able to put up 349 yards in Indianapolis, right, against the Patriots and get his team into the Super Bowl. I congratulate Peyton Manning on that. But understand that that record, two disastrous losses, one in which he only got three points, um, you know, the other in which he throws three picks to the same Patriots. That record pales in comparison 
to Eli Manning's record against Tom Brady. And understand, both quarterbacks are part of the Brady narrative, right? The first Super Bowl, Super Bowl 42, that Eli Manning played against Tom Brady, understand, in the fourth quarter of that game, Eli Manning threw for 152 yards and had seven passing first downs. Just the fourth quarter, right? Let's fast forward to yesterday's game. Just the fourth quarter. Eli Manning threw for 118 yards. Seven passing first downs. By the way, for those keeping track, it was the eighth winning drive in the fourth quarter or overtime that Eli Manning had this season. And in winning the MVP of the Super Bowl for the second time, understand that Eli Manning joined a club of multiple Super Bowl MVP winners. That's very limited. The only guys in that group read like a Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks for the Hall of Fame. Bart Starr, Terry Bradshaw, Joe Montana, and oh yes, Tom Brady. Right? So Eli not only is 2-0 against Brady in Super Bowls, but Eli statistically has shown up big in the fourth quarter. Right? Eli's reputation, quite frankly, is as a closer, right? He, you know, seems to play best in the biggest games. Let's go further. And keep in mind, I understand Eli has self-immolated in some playoff games in the past. But no one remembers those games, right? What they remember is a 2-0 Super Bowl record with more than 100 passing yards in the fourth quarter of both games. And let me point out, in both games, the Giants were underdogs. Compare and contrast that with Peyton Manning. He played Rex Grossman and the Bears. No one's going to put Rex Grossman in the Hall of Fame anytime soon, right? Of course, Indianapolis was favored. They won the game. Later, Indianapolis played the New Orleans Saints. Indianapolis was favored. Not only did they lose the game, one of the key plays of that game was a Peyton Manning interception, right? And so all I'm saying is this, you know, Eli Manning is winning Super Bowls as an underdog. His brother lost a Super Bowl as a favorite. Not only that, when you look at Eli Manning, Understand that it's a changing cast of characters around him, right? He didn't have Victor Cruz for that first Super Bowl, right? He had Amani Toomer. He didn't have Ballard for that first Super Bowl. He had a different tight end, right? Not only that, the personnel around Eli Manning isn't stellar. This isn't the 70s Pittsburgh Steelers where you look left, they're Hall of Famers. You look right, they're Hall of Famers. And in the middle is Mike Webster. He's a Hall of Famer, right? No, this is a different situation where the Giants this year became the first team to win a Super Bowl after having given up more points in the regular season than they scored. In other words, Eli Manning is taking some shaky teams some shaky teams to the promised land. Teams that aren't favored in Super Bowls. Now, Eli Manning hasn't had a Hall of Fame wide receiver like Marvin Harrison. His brother has, right? Eli Manning, quite frankly, hasn't had a highly touted college wide receiver like Reggie Wayne. His brother has. And so, you know, what people need to realize, quite frankly, is that Eli Manning is doing an awful lot with what he has. He's uh, winning big games like yesterday's game, quite frankly, without a lot of great talent around him, right? Let me also point out, too, playoff record. You know, Eli Manning 
really on the back of two Super Bowl runs, two stellar Super Bowl runs, in which he won games like Brett Favre's last game as a Green Bay Packer. Right? Think about that. That was in the NFC Championship game before the Giants faced the Patriots for the first time in Eli Manning's career, right, in the Super Bowl, right? Eli Manning literally has won some games that might be played on classic TV 20 years from now, right? The 49er game, you know, this year, the um, NFC Championship game, and again, Eli Manning's beating teams on the road, right? Green Bay and Green Bay, the 49ers in San Francisco. So he has a big time winning percentage in postseason games, right? I believe he's something like nine and three or something like that. It's huge. Well, understand for him to lose that above 500, well above 500 record, it'll be very hard for him to do so because the Giants would have to make the playoffs for several years and lose their first game in the playoffs, right? Because if they make the playoffs and win that first game, then worst case scenario is Eli Manning would be one and one for that year in his postseason record. Not only that, for Eli Manning, let's say he's nine and three in the postseason, just for argument's sake. For him to get to nine and nine, that would mean that he would have to lead the Giants to the playoffs for six more seasons. In other words, he would be your prototypical playoff quarterback. So my point to you is simply, it's going to be awfully hard for Eli Manning to finish his career with a bad playoff record, right? He has an exemplary playoff record right now, and quite frankly, it's very unlikely that that record would ever get to 500. Now contrast that with his brother. Did you know that Peyton Manning is 9-10 and 10 in the postseason? Did you know that Peyton Manning's teams in the postseason have been won and done seven times? Think about that. Seven times. Did you know that in the 10 playoff losses that Peyton Manning suffered in the playoffs... Did you know that the Colts have averaged barely more than 14 points a game? And of course, yesterday, late in the Super Bowl, uh, ABC or NBC, whoever televised the Super Bowl, I believe it's NBC, flashed a stat that showed that both Brady and Eli Manning at that moment had quarterback ratings over 100. Would it surprise you to learn that Peyton Manning's postseason quarterback rating is 88.4. And so what you have is Big Brother not doing as well as Little Brother in the postseason, right? You have Little Brother playing in the biggest games and taking down the franchise quarterback of the era in two different Super Bowls, the same man who has taken down his brother when they've met in the AFC-NFC Championship game and in the playoff game the very next year, right? I believe Peyton Manning is going to have a very hard time in history given that he has great numbers, but only one Super Bowl win and that Super Bowl is a forgettable one, right? I think Eli Manning, on the other hand, um, he's on a team that looks loaded um, for the future. You know, they uh, have a coach who has Super Bowl experience, and uh, the team seems to, um, you know, as long as everyone is healthy, seems to be able to produce in the postseason. I think the Eli Manning story is still being written. But as it is, the chapters that have been written so far are better, in my opinion, 
than what has been written so far for his big brother career-wise. Finally, let me just say this. When you think about football, you think about the uh, cold tundra, right? You think about, you know, outside conditions. The fact that Peyton Manning uh, played indoors really does hurt, in my opinion, um, his comparison to someone like his brother, who plays, quite frankly, not only outdoors, but against more memorable opponents, Dallas Cowboys, Washington Redskins, Philadelphia Eagles, right? You see, you know, those guys, you see cold air, you uh, know that they're hitting because it's the NFC East. I would argue that even Eli's division gives him a better platform from which to show his brilliance to the fans. I think uh, barring some career collapse by Eli and some uh, career resurrection by Peyton Manning, I think we'll remember Eli Manning as the better quarterback. I understand a host of people disagree with me, Eric Allen, uh, others, uh, but I think Eli Manning, two-time MVP, two Super Bowl wins over Tom Brady, stellar playoff record, big game. He's the guy who took down arguably New England's best team. Right? He's the guy who yesterday was down 17-9 and came back to win the game 21-14. That's what people will remember. Right? Do you have any such moments in games of that magnitude by Peyton Manning? I'd say no. Let me hear what you say. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at dwyerfootball.blogspot.com and, of course, at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.